You're inside the Mouse Castle with Tim and Anthony. Visit us at themousecastle.com. Follow the Mouse Castle on Facebook and Inside the MC on Twitter. Inside the Mouse Castle is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. Soon, you'll understand why. Here's Tim and Anthony. Welcome inside the Mouse Castle. I'm Tim Calloway. And I'm Anthony Reynolds. It is November 30th, 2015. We are your weekly dose of Disney news, information, and commentary. And what is coming up today, Anthony? Well, Pixar's The Good Dinosaur opened strong over the weekend. We kind of got snuck in a new trailer for Captain America's Civil War. And China is shutting down some fake Disney hotels. That's all next inside the Mouse Castle. Well, Timmy boy, you saw the good dinosaur over the weekend. Why, yes, yes, I did, Anthony, my buddy old pal. Not your pal, buddy. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, saw a good dinosaur and was pleasantly surprised. I know we both had our reservations, and you, uh, and you especially so after you'd seen the preview at Disneyland, but I thought it was pretty good. I didn't make any reservations. You didn't make any reservations to no, see No, I it. don't care. To Neither see it. did I, but I got into the theater anyway. It's not Pixar's best movie. No, that'd be Cars 2. Uh, see, no, 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 no. See, you stop that. I, not as bad as Cars. I still like Cars 2. I still think Cars 2 is an underrated film. That's weird. Well, yeah, no, I think it's underrated. I don't, I'm not in love with it, though. I think it's actually better than Cars. But anyway, The Good Dinosaur, I mean, story-wise, it's not breaking any new ground. It's been done before. And the thing that, that I've noticed uh, about the movie is how much it borrows from other films, both from a storytelling standpoint and from like a set design or you know visual development setup. It, it, it seems to want to take ideas from, from other movies. So, I mean, you, you catch references to Jaws and Jurassic Park, obviously, and uh, just about every, you know, John Ford Western that was ever made and Big Hero 6. Uh, you know the, the scene in Big Hero 6 where Baymax and, and Hero are above the fog looking at all the balloons that are stretched out towards the, the sunset? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a cool scene. There's a, there's a scene just like that in The Good Dinosaur. Oh. Where Arlo, the good dinosaur, and his human companion, the little boy Spot, uh, have their heads above the clouds and they're looking at the sunset. And it's set up almost exactly <laughs> like the scene in Big Hero 6. And there's, I mean, there's so many different elements like that in the movie, which was a little annoying because there, there is a sense that this movie kind of lacks originality. But that said, I guess if you're gonna if you're gonna steal steal from the best, uh, somehow or other, Pete Stone, the director who came in and replaced Bob Peterson, it, he's nevertheless put together a pretty good film, and it has a heart to it. Uh, there's a lot of emotion to Davey it. Davy Jones heart. Uh, Davy Jones, right? Give to him heart. Yes. <laughs> With it, Jack. You know, speaking of dinosaurs, I, w I was kind of rewatching Jurassic World. I really like that movie in theaters, but rewatching it, you kind of realize how paint by numbers it is. I miss Laura Dern in the worst way. Bryce Dallas Howard or whatever She's her name doing, is. Uh, Laura Dern's doing a show with Bill Burr of her Netflix. It's like a dirty animated show. I'd see that. Like F is for family. Nice. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, um, you, you know, it's funny. I uh, On uh, Black Friday deals at Target, you could get Jurassic Park or Jurassic World on Blu-ray for 10 bucks. Huh? So I got my copy. I hadn't uh, I hadn't gotten it yet, but uh, it's like it's it was there. It was 10 bucks. There was a ton of them. It's like, OK, mine. It's a solid flick, but diminishing returns. Yeah, it's it's not a a movie that uh, you just want to see over and over again because, like you said, when you see it, you catch all the faults in it. Yeah, why would they be running from this thing? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. It's CG. It's not really there. Which is <sighs> there? There you go. There's there's a good comparison. Which is the better dinosaur movie of the year, Jurassic World or The Good Dinosaur? And I would say Jurassic World. Didn't an Expendables movie come out this year? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. 
Now, uh, The Good Dinosaur opened strong for a Thanksgiving weekend release, but in all of the, what, 12 or 13 Pixar movies that have been released, it actually ranks near the bottom. Uh, it took in a little over $39 million just on the, the three-day weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But if you factor in the whole Thanksgiving weekend, uh, going back to like late Wednesday night, uh, it took in $55.5 million, which is nothing to sneeze at that's not that's it's money not, that's it's money it's it's not a bad opening at all it finished in second place to the hunger games mocking jay part two. Oh, it took second it took second oh, yeah i can see that yeah but uh so so depending on your point of view from my point of view the jedi are evil there you go <laughs> <laughs> Come to the dark side. We have cookies, but I guess if you like the movie, you point to the fact that it was it was very strong for a Thanksgiving opening. If you're critical of the film, you're going to point out that it kind of ranks down among Pixar movies. I mean, at the very least, it was a nice getaway from your drunk racist uncle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or Donald Trump. Either way, same thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, kind of curious too. We talked about Pete Sohn coming in uh, to to take over the film, which we've talked about before. Uh, but I was I was reading up on on Cartoon Brew, which covers all the animation. Oh, business. oh Cartoon Beer. Cartoon Beer sounds good too. It looks uh, really good. Yeah, like Cartoon Pizza and Cartoon Beer look way better than they are in real life, and the real life versions are really good. Yeah. Now, do you like do you like two D Cartoon Beer or CG Cartoon Beer? I, mean, I don't know if I've seen CG cartoon beer. I'm not talking about 2D animation. Okay. The things I want to try in cartoon world, pizza, grapes, and beer. Okay. We'll try that. They look delicious. But um, that said, <laughs> moving, cartoon brew. moving right along, do you realize how many recent Pixar films have changed directors mid-production? It seems like a lot. Uh, it is. Four out of the last five Pixar releases have had a director change at some point. Now, Inside Out being the outsider, I mean, it's the one that was Pete Docter's, you know, vision and his baby from start to finish. But Monsters University, Brave, and Cars 2 all had director changes. What do you think the most forgettable Pixar movie is? And not necessarily bad, but forgettable. Because I completely forgot about Monsters University. See, and I see, and I like Monsters University. I liked it. I forgot it existed. Um, I think I think A Bug's Life gets overlooked a lot. Nah, it's got a whole land. It does, but that's I I don't I don't think of A Bug's Life. That's not the movie that comes top of mind when I start thinking of Pixar movies. I think Ratatouille is very forgettable. I agree. I've always had issues with that movie. I've never been able to get past the fact that no matter how pretty the animation is, it's still about rats in the kitchen, and that just bothers me. It is weird. I need to rewatch. I think I watched that one once. I wasn't all that impressed. That was not. Yeah, that was not one of my favorite Pixar movies. I mean, obviously, I stand with France, but Ratatouille, I'm not so sure. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so Pixar. And the good dinosaur, doing okay. Go see it. Or go, not. I would, you know, I really, I would recommend go seeing it. I think you're going to like it. You know, a movie that was delayed a year uh, because of changes in director and changes in story and all that. You know, right there, it makes you a little concerned about what the outcome is going to be. But I think it's an entertaining fi flick. I think it's something to take the kids to. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. And uh, maybe it's one of those movies that kind of like we just talked about that you forget over a period of time. But for now, you, there's worse ways to spend your time in the theater. Yeah, just ask Paul Rubens. Oh, my. <laughs> Speaking of fun at the movies, uh, we've got our first peek at Captain America Civil War. Yeah, they kind of slipped that one in quietly. Yeah, they normally haven't they been like building up these releases? Yeah. And like, oh, in three days you're gonna see this new trailer. I think they just did it because all the every time they ramp up a trailer it leaks. Yeah, so I mean what it came out what, last Tuesday night. It just showed up <laughs> online. And uh what'd you think? I was I was kind of impressed. I'm impressed. It definitely has more of a 
because every movie, every uh, Marvel movie, even though they're all the same universe, has their own vibe, and it definitely has. It definitely is a Captain America vibe versus an Iron Man or Avengers vibe, if that makes any sense at all. Although I, although I was kind of feeling an Avengers vibe because it has that sort of dark cast to it that Avengers: Age of Ultron had when when it's. Are you saying that because Black Panther's in it? Oh, <laughs> you do get a quick glimpse at uh, Black Panther, you but do. who did we not see? Spiderman. And Spiderman, I know. So, you know, just like Luke is missing from the Force Awakens trailer, Spider-Man was missing from Captain America Civil War, and we know he's in it. Too bad I couldn't get a glimpse of Marissa Tomei and my Force could awaken. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's weird that she's Aunt, Aunt May now. Hey, my, my. Mm. That's weird. I know. I, I do have trouble with that, though. I mean, I, I, I get that Spider-Man is going to be a, a younger character than we're used to in previous Spider-Man movies. And so uh, Aunt May is age appropriate, but damn, it's Marissa Tomei, and she's just, oh my. <laughs> I hope Uncle Ben is Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you blend. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a good <laughs> casting choice. <laughs> Joe Pesci hasn't been in a lot, has he? Not lately. I got to see my cousin Vinny again. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good flick. That is. That is funny. So Captain America... Civil War. I mean, I want to see it. Um, there's that scene in there we see in the trailer, basically, Bucky and Cap kicking Iron Man's ass. Yeah. How about that? Like, they were thrown around that shield like it was a pinball, ping pong, Boom, not a ping pong, baby. Uh, pinball machine. Yeah, that too. And it's, 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 it's curious or, or interesting that the opening segment in the trailer comes right out of the post credit scene in Ant-Man where you see Cap and Bucky and Falcon. I thought that was that was a good good way to, to connect it for people who actually hung around to the very end of Ant-Man and it still stuns me that anybody who's ever gone to a Marvel film will leave before the credits completely roll. You know, I wonder if these people have like read about what happened and like, yeah, I don't think that's worth it. It's like they know. That's what I want to believe. Because I don't want to believe they're stupid enough just to leave, you know? I was the last person in the theater. I was the only person at the screening that I went to of Ant-Man who saw the post credit trailer. Everybody else leave. left. You should let everybody leave. I, that just... that just. I would have been yelling, stay! That just surprised me. Very much. So, I, and I guess uh, apparently the Russo brothers who have directed Civil War... Um, have kind of talked up a little bit about what it all means and what the relationships are all about and how the movie is about their characters and not really worrying about the storyline and kind of hinting at the fact that this Civil War story is going to differ possibly significantly from what comic book fans saw in the comics. Yeah, and um, there's a thread on Reddit discussing the trailer, and it seems that because in the comics for the Civil War plotline, Tony Stark basically was character assassination. They just basically turned him into something short of just a villain. Like I think he was actually like, hiring like actual supervillains to fight this, and it seems that they kind of pumped the brakes on that character development and actually made him more relatable than he was. Mm-hmm. Which they're kind of a fan of, because I said it took forever for anybody to even like Tony Stark again after that. Interesting. Now, comic book fans are listening to me talk, going, "What the hell is he talking about?" Well, the uh, the other one too, and and this may or may not be a spoiler, but I'm going to say it anyway. In the comic book Civil War, Captain America dies at the end. How many more movies is he signed we, on for? We don't know, but answer? but this also kind of supports the the theory that perhaps Bucky, the Winter Soldier, uh, is going to become the new Captain America. Because he did in the comics. Going on for a while. He could. I don't know. I don't know if they're if they're going to do it. I don't, I don't know how for, how for how many more movies Cap is signed up for. Chris Evans. I feel like they'd have to kill Iron Man first because he's got to be tired of being in these movies by now. 
I feel so lied to because uh, Robert Downey Jr. had said a while back that there would be no Iron Man 4, which is true. He just keeps showing up in other superheroes' movies. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's kind of what they're doing with Hulk. I mean, they haven't had a Hulk movie, so I mean, it kind of makes sense in the universe. We don't really need a Iron Man movie. Just, as long as we get Iron Man. We should get the Iron Man movie we deserve. Not the one we need right now. Plus, the other two have been kind of, were kind of crappy. Which other two? Other two, like Iron Man 2 was kind of eh. Iron Man 2 was very eh. Was Iron Man 3, crap. I thought, was pretty solid. It was him versus Magic Fire I People. like the Magic Fire People. No. <laughs> it was okay. stupid. Well, fine. I'll talk about something else that's really stupid in your world. More Disney checked Infinity out. Uh, released a new trailer for their Star Wars The Force Awakens play set that looks pretty cool and that's really all i have to say about it uh <laughs> k force gum that's all yeah life is like a box of disney infinity characters never know what you're going to get well what do they got uh, in this thing? well it is there oh first of all they're they're holding off on the release until december 18th so it will coincide with the release of the force awakens film but it will basically follow the storyline which explains why they're not releasing it until uh, The Force Awakens oh. comes out. Um, and you you can play the part of uh, Finn and Rey and Kylo Ren and Poe Dameron and look for Luke Skywalker, I guess. The hunt for Luke. Apparently, uh, um, trying to avoid spoilers, I still stumbled upon um, uh, Mark Hamill's growing out his beard again. Oh, he's coming back for episode eight. We know that. That's, yeah. that's not news. News to me. But will he be alive or will he be like the Force Ghost, like Obi Wan and Yoda and Hayden Christensen? Ugh. <laughs> Hayden Christensen. God, he's awful. Those movies are terrible. Although our, our friend Ron, uh, he posted on his Facebook page, he's catching up on all the Star Wars films. And he was uh, watching Revenge of the Sith tonight. And uh, he said, and, and I concur with this, that of the prequel films, it is the best of the three. No, oh, it definitely is. Yes. Now, it's not saying much, but it does a good job at tying up all the loose ends and setting up episode four, Star Wars. You know, that one scene's kind of weird. You are uh, uh, Darth uh, uh, Vader, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when they name him, it's so anticlimactic. It's just, oh yeah, I'm just you're Darth Vader now. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation. What does it mean? Nobody cares. Yeah, whatever. So Darth Vader. Shit up. Exactly. We just make this up as we go along. Pretty much. So there's apparently like was it five hotels in China? Yeah. All all okay. owned by the same company. All owned by the same company, and they have been just like hardcore stealing Disney's trademark property. Yeah, and wow, that's something you never hear of in China. Uh, no. Companies ripping off American companies. Not at all. <laughs> but yeah, they have like, their Disney logo on their signs and their websites, and Disney caught wind, which I guess is kind of, it makes sense because... Disney's pumping money hardcore into China now. Oh, yeah. A little, little place called Shanghai Disneyland Resort. Now, is Hong Kong... I mean, this is so how ignorant I am. Is Hong Kong part of China? It is well, now. Is Hong Kong kind of its own thing? It, it is and it's not. There was the handoff some years back. It, was, it used to be uh, under uh, the rule of Great Britain, wasn't it? And oh. then it was kind of handed back to China. It's part of China, but it also runs independent of China at the same time. And that's a that's a geopolitical thing I don't fully understand. Is but, it kind of like Puerto Rico then? Um, Us? I, I, I guess. Okay. I yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I it's have a no weird idea. thing. I don't know how to compare it. We should start a podcast where we talk about what Hong Kong is. Yes. Every week, Anthony and Tim try to figure out what the hell's going on with Hong <laughs> Kong stats. We have no idea. I'm sure there's a podcast out there already. Chances yeah, are. Yeah, probably. Everybody has one. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, it was, uh, what was the name of this company here? It was the Shenzhen Vienna Hotels Group. And, they, I mean, if, if you're going to, you know, slap them around for copyright and tra trademark infringement, 
I mean, the the total amount that they were fined. It's like a whopping 100,000 won. I mean, holy crap. Which That's going to be bad. Almost $16,000. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it wasn't a. It could have. I guess it could have been worse. But I, I think this was kind of a. Just a move on China's part to just to demonstrate to Disney that, yes, we do have your best interests in heart and we promise to protect your trademarks as best we can, even though the history of our nation is that we've been ripping you off left and right for decades. There's still going to be a ton of T-shirts that are going to be just floating around. Oh, there's going to be so many products going to be knocked off there. Oh, I know. No kidding. That's going to be ridiculous. Oh, speaking of copyright infringement, I was on... Um, Another website I visit, um, FARC, um, and there is a Venezuelan company that's doing, they have like their own like show, and it is the most blatant use of trademark infringement I've ever seen. They had um, Elsa and Anna, Olaf and Sven, all those characters, even the freaking gnomes came out. In one <laughs> Trolls. Part. Trolls, whatever the hell they are. <laughs> And then they had the the Avengers came on stage, and then, God, they had I think Mickey Mouse was there. I mean, it was all these stolen characters. So it was kind of like Times Square. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was awful. And what were they doing? I mean, was it was it was like a, a variety show? Dancing or... and singing. The Avengers came out. They had Black Widow was there, and it in the. Hulk was there. The worst costume was Iron Man, who was wearing, like, pajamas from the waist down. There's a <laughs> video of it on, like, TMZ. They posted that. So was this, like, a TV show or was this a, a no, stage show? No, it's like or? a stage show. And you see all these kids in the audience. It's nuts. Uh, hold on. Disney and Marvel lawsuit. I'm looking it up here. It's just... Oh, and one other thing, TMZ is doing this really crappy thing where they're embedding YouTube videos and you get no controls on there. So like you don't have your play, pause, volume or anything. It just plays it just in a box. You know, I'm seeing that happen on other websites, not just TMZ. You need to knock it off. Yeah. Uh, now, can you link to YouTube? Can yeah, you like, nah. click click on it to kind of jump directly to YouTube? Because that, that's what I will do. Because I, I've seen other sites do similar things where you you lose all the controls in the embedding, and that just annoys the crap out of me. And um, yeah, so usually I'll just if I really want to see the video, I'll I'll just go directly to YouTube. Yeah, that's what I did. But yeah, I know they have. Yeah, it's like a kids show, and you can see the kids in the audience. Uh, yeah, Mickey Mouse, Elsa, superheroes, and it's the. The show is called Frozen Adventure or Adventure Congladas. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Alrighty, well, oh, yeah, I, it's oh, I, so, I, I, I want to. I need to see this now. It's really bad. You should see the Hulk character. So is is Disney suing them? Is that now the point, or is it just they they were just showcasing this this blatant ripoff of Disney and Marvel? They fired off a cease and desist letter to them. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, so they threaten to sue them. Um, so I'm guessing they'll probably fold on that because they're not wrong. <laughs> I, no, no, that sounds pretty, pretty blatant, pretty obnoxious. Um, do you collect Funko Pop characters? I have one of Doc and Marty, but that's it. I don't really collect them. I don't know where I'd put them all, really. That's I, the main, main I, thing. I have tried so hard not to collect them because not because I don't like them. I think, I think they're cleverly done, but because there's so many of them and I like so many of them that if I start, it will never end. And this will cost me a fortune kind of, I mean, I already have my Disney infinity obsession. I'm not ready to add a Funko pop obsession to it as well. Yeah. You don't want that. No. However, they have just released on Disneyland Resort properties or on, on Disney Resort properties only, and this is so Disneyland and Walt Disney World, there are Haunted Mansion Funko Pop characters. <gasps> the Hitchhiking Ghosts and the Hatbox Ghost. Uh, that, does that mean more Disney coming off? Like more Disney park stuff? 
coming down the pipeline with that? I don't know. I don't know. And uh, there was some concern that these would be limited editions and it would already be too late to get them because they released them on Black Friday. They came out in the parks um, the day after Thanksgiving. But these are not limited edition, so they should be available for a while. And you can get them at uh, D Street at, uh, in the downtown Disney District at Disneyland Resort. And you can also get them at Walt Disney World at Pin Traders in the Disney Springs Marketplace. Ooh, those will go fast for yes. a bit. And, and uh, I mean, there have been a lot of requests to if they will uh, be available online. You know, at the the various you know Disney store sites that that sell Disney mer Disney parks merchandise, so mm -hmm. far no, but it has not been ruled out. Oh, uh, you'll see it. I It'll wonder, be on eBay otherwise. I, I mean, they got to make some kind of move. They're so damn cute. <laughs> they're all right. Make it stop. <laughs> they're ghosts. They're skeletons. They're Funko. They've come out to socialize. Oh, hey, we weren't scheduled to talk about this, but I just came across this article. Um, Tom Hanks was talking about Toy Story 4. Okay. Um, he was on the Graham Norton show on BBC, and basically he said they're now recording it. He has a studio session on the 2nd of December. Nice. So things are moving on that. Things are moving. Even though it's not out for another three years. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it takes a little while to animate it. So, cool. And yeah, I guess uh, I'm assuming Tim Allen's did. back, too. I forget about him. Yeah. I know. We always talk about Tom Hanks. It's like, oh, yeah, there's that other guy. Oh, he has a show, doesn't he, now, uh, Tim Allen? Yes. He had a show. Does he still have a show? I don't know. Let's Google it. Remember that time he was smuggling cocaine? <laughs> Remember that time he was in prison? Let's see. Oh, he's 62. Let's see, Tim Allen. Let's see, the Last Man Standing. Yeah, he still has a show. There you go. That's on ABC, right? Uh, it has to be. I thought he sold a soul to Disney a while back. Home Improvement reruns and Last Man Standing. Yep, it's on ABC. Then Santa Claus and Toy Story. Yeah, he's he's Disney's bitch. <laughs> hey, it pays the bills, I guess. Pretty much. How old is Tom Hanks? He's only fifty nine. Yeah, Tom Hanks is in his late fifties, so. He's looking old, though. And, uh, now, I say I still want to see Bridge of Spies. Because that's oh, supposed I to be saw really good. Steven Spielberg directed Tom Hanks stars in and uh, actually released by Disney through Touchdown. It's a DreamWorks production, but it was part of the um, distribution deal that DreamWorks made with Disney a few years ago. And I think it's going to be the last, or I think it is the last uh, movie in the, in the deal. Mm -hmm. so, See, I thought they shut down Touchstone a while back. It's like they use the name periodically um, when they don't want to use the Disney name because Bridge of Spies is a Touchstone release. It's it's distributed by them. And don't forget, our favorite movie, Strange Magic, was released <laughs> by Touchstone. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah. No wonder they didn't want Disney to do it. And that will do it for this edition of Inside the Mouse Castle. Don't forget to visit us at themousecastle.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash themousecastle, and over on Twitter at Inside the MC. And we're also on Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest, and you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. So stay tuned, folks. So stay tuned. And, um, yeah, meanwhile... Why are you Nicolas Cage now? I don't. Am I Nicolas Cage? Do I sound like Nicolas Cage? We I have to know. steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and we have to do it before next week <laughs> and another edition of Inside the Mouse Castle. See ya. <laughs>